How I run a 350K per month Pokemon business online with bipolar disorder. First, I'll give you a rundown of what bipolar is and save you the Google search. Secondly, I'm gonna tell you guys how it's affected my business and my time running up to my business. And third, if you happen to be bipolar, like 4.4% of America, hopefully some tips at the end of the video help you out when starting your own business. So first of all, I have bipolar two, which is way, way less intense than bipolar one. But for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna to refer to it as bipolar and X out the two. You can Google what one is later. So kind of like OCD, people use the term bipolar wrong quite frequently. Uh, it's not really a happy or sad or angry or glad type of thing. It's more of an on or off, hypomanic on the high end and basically pseudo depression on the low end. This hypomania and pseudo depression cycle up and down, depending on the person, it can be days or weeks for each one. And then you do get a couple normal days sprinkled in there. On the high end, hypomania has some perks. Uh, hyper creativity, the increased capacity to learn new skills, the ability to go several days without any sleeping or any food, and just energy beyond your wildest imagination. The pitfalls of the hypomanic state include spending money, making really irrational decisions, gambling, and sometimes relationship problems. On the other side of the spectrum, the depression end, you might be sleeping 18 to 20 hours per day. You don't even have the energy to get out of bed. You don't wanna to talk to anybody. You don't wanna do anything. You don't even really wanna live. You're not sad. You're just completely indifferent to the world. The lack of activity in the pseudo depressed mode might seem like a choice just to be lazy, but I assure you it is physically impossible to get up and do anything. It would kind of be like telling a high person to snap out of it or a drunk person to drive better. Um, you just don't have the dopamine that your brain needs at the time. It's, it's cycled in somewhere else. For the record, I'm medicated and we'll talk about that later, um, but all of these things still apply. It's just more toned down and more manageable. Okay, so there's the facts. Now let's talk about how it's affected my business and failed businesses all the way up to my eventual success as a Pokemon card business. So like many mid 20 year olds who have hypomania, uh, the stuff really started presenting itself in like 2016, 2018, I was in mid twenties. And it kind of presented itself in the form of like wacky business ideas, irrational ideas and weird hobbies. For some people, it presents much worse, like gambling addiction and cheating on your partners. I, luckily, I don't have that. If you know anyone with autism, you might know that they have like super hyper-focused uh, interests. Like I know one kid, he's got an obsession with newspaper bags. He collects them. He's got like a thousand of them. He can't let it go. And while not an official fact, I feel like that autistic level of obsession is probably pretty comparable to the level of obsession you get in hypomania. The difference is no matter the skill, the business idea, the obsession, whatever, when you go from that hypomanic state into just normalcy or pseudo depression, you will never look back at that hobby or skill or interest again. Even if it's an objectively good idea or skill or business, you lose complete interest in it. You become as indifferent as ever because the interest was never really something you as a human wanted. It's more of a brainchild of the disorder. It's crazy as that sounds. For example, one day I decided I'm gonna to learn to play the guitar. Without doing any research or forethought, I drove to Guitar Center, spent 1200 bucks on a Gibson SG, which was basically all of my money, played it for 20 hours straight for two weeks. If you know anyone uh, with like a meth addiction, I'm not even kidding, it's, it's very similar to that where you just can't do anything else. You're basically like trapped. Um, I played until my fingers bled as the song suggests. And literally though, I couldn't even carry things. Like my hands hurt. And I basically just got hyped up on painkillers and taped on my fingertips so I could keep going. Then after about two weeks, the low came and for 90% of my day, I would sleep essentially in a comatose state. After a while of that, I came back to a normal controlled state, looked at the guitar, didn't care about it at all, had zero interest in learning it, zero interest in playing it, considered it a waste of time, sold it on Craigslist for a loss and moved on. And that's what happens when you're bipolar. You love something, you get obsessed with it, you can't forget about it, and then boom, just like that, you're completely indifferent. So back to some funny stories about my business ventures. One day I decided I was gonna open my own zoo. I was gonna give virtual tours on Zoom um, of my reptile zoo. So without giving it much more thought, and I have no idea where this idea came from, I went to the pet store and I bought a bearded dragon but I needed that bearded dragon to have a mansion. So I spent $600 on an enclosure with decorations, all of the accessories, I was hooked. Within one month, I had 12 animals and I wrote them all down. Two bearded dragons, three ball pythons, a Chinese water dragon, a leopard gecko, a blue tongue skink, a tarantula, two axolotls and a piranha. 
All in all, it costs $400 a month just to keep these animals healthy and happy, and trust me, I paid it. And then one day, I just didn't care at all. Had no interest in my zoo project. Now, I'm bipolar, I'm not a psycho. These animals needed good homes, and I wasn't just gonna pin them off to the Humane Society, so it took a year and a half to find all 12 of them good homes, and I talk about that in the description of the video. You can look at that. It's Trust me, I did that one right. Okay, one last business story before I got successful. Um, one of my business ideas was to become a professional YouTuber in the ASMR niche. Just randomly decided that. Went to Best Buy, spent $800 on a DSLR camera, $200 on a Yeti mic, $1,500 on a laptop to edit videos, and then a few hundred dollars on supplies. Um, at the time, soap cutting and slime was like really trendy in the ASMR satisfying space. So I spent several hundred dollars on that stuff. I ended up doing ASMR videos locked in a bedroom for like 10 to 14 days straight, no sleeping. I quit my job, completely just threw away all responsibilities. Now, believe it or not, I actually accumulated like 2,000 subs extremely quickly. So I got quite successful at it for two weeks, but here's the catch. I eventually fell into that depressed state. I slept basically in a coma for five days straight. When I woke up, I had zero interest in ASMR, thought it was stupid, sold all the stuff I bought on eBay, and literally deleted the channel. Yeah. All in all, I thought up, attempted, and obsessively poured money into the following business ideas. Clothing designer, roach and earthworm breeder, reptile keeper, ASMR YouTuber, Twitch streamer, audiobook narrator, music producer, we'll talk about that one, drip painting artist, drop shipper, concrete, Atlas stone manufacturer, like the world's strongest man, Atlas stones, um, arcade repair, iPhone refurbishing, and even an Airbnb host. Now, obviously it's fun to try new hobbies and you know creative endeavors, but you gotta remember, I'm crazy. Every one of these business ideas I had, I didn't just go, oh, that would be neat. No, I poured like hundreds or thousands of dollars into each one, got decently successful at a few, and then immediately just threw the whole idea away and started over. A little self-masochism there. Now you're probably wondering, Brian, how the hell did you live this way? Where did you live? How did you afford life? Well, I was very lucky on timing. So like I said, bipolar symptoms typically present in your mid twenties. Well, in my high school and college days, I was about as good of a business person as I am now. I have one skill. I only know how to do one thing and that's make money. You know all those scammy like business gurus on YouTube? I had the skills that they pretend to have. I had a decent job as an IT recruiter, but ultimately I made triple that salary just going to garage sales and going to Walmart clearance and flipping stuff on eBay. And it wasn't just some joke side hustle, it was like I had it down to a professional science. Every day I would visit 12 Walmart, sometimes more than once a day, and I'd, I'd get inventory, I did garage sales too, and then every other day I would stay home, list them on eBay, package my orders, and do some research and development. Again, I did this very professionally. I'd bring a dozen donuts to every Walmart I visited every week or so, every week to 10 days. And I did that in exchange for insider info. So Walmart employees before the clearance day, they would, hey, they would say, hey, Brian, we're gonna clearance this whole pallet of X, Y, or Z. You got first dibs, what do you want? And I'd buy them by the pallet. So if you've ever gone into Walmart um, trying to make a quick buck on clearance items and your Walmart never has good clearance items, it's because someone like me is in the back pulling the strings with pastries. Sorry. Anyway, with all these skills, I was able to buy a house when I was 22. Things were easier then. The house was 135K. I got a 1% down payment thanks to a NIFA loan, N-I-F-A. I don't know if that's still a thing. And then 3.2% uh, interest. Our monthly mortgage was like 1400 bucks. I got my brother to move in with me and he paid me 400 bucks a month rent. Uh, he was in kind of a scary apartment that paid 600 a month. And so I moved him to the nicer side of town. He saved 200 bucks, so it was a win-win. My wife, uh, who still lived with her parents at the time, she was gonna move out to an apartment. And I'm like, we've been dating for several years now. Why pay for an apartment? You're gonna be with me all day anyway. Come and help me with a mortgage. We got married, it's all good. So I had no worries about paying a mortgage, even if I did get really like cuckoo it was pretty affordable. So yeah, if you were wondering where all those crazy business stories took place, it wasn't like in my mom's basement, it was at my own house. I was sort of an adult. Now, despite my best efforts to hide my goofiness from my wife and friends, which I was very, very good at hiding it, and you probably know someone who is too, 
Eventually, my uh, lack of health and horrible decision making got the best of everyone, and they were like, hey, dude, like, are you okay? And they found a bullet pointed list of like symptoms of bipolar disorder. They're like, I think you have this. And I kind of laughed, and then I read the list, and I'm like, oh, that does kind of sound like me. So they convinced me to see a psych, and he was impressed because they almost nailed it. They said I had bipolar one, turns out I had two, which again, much more manageable. So he prescribed me Lamotrigin, Lamictal. I don't, one of them's the brand and one of them's the drug. So now I had an official diagnosis and an official prescription, but I was like afraid to commit to taking the drug because even though the depressing side was super hard, and even though I made horrible decisions on the manic end, it was so addicting, like that energy and creativity was so intoxicating that I was afraid if I took the drug and balanced myself out, I would lose that. And uh, I actually know two people, bipolar people almost hang out together, that also are on this drug and they're like, you know what, it'll tone you down, it'll balance you out a little bit, but you still have that energy, that creativity, and you'll still be depressed here and there, but it's just toned down and more manageable. And I said, all right, cool. And so I went for it. The drugs worked really fast. Uh, 200 milligrams a day is what I got bumped up to. And within three months I felt normal, or at least what I feel like normal people feel. It's probably like trying to describe color to a blind person. You don't really know, but like I felt better and that was nice. So here's the craziest thing about getting the treatment for being bipolar. All of those business ideas I told you guys about, all of those skills and stuff that I abandoned and took back, none of that led to anything good. But the first business venture I thought up after I was medicated was Pokeyany.com, my Pokemon card business. Yeah, I started a multi-million dollar revenue business two months after taking this drug. I could be a poster child for this company. I'm sure these results aren't typical. Anyway, like all my crazy business ideas, I was told to pitch them to my wife before I made any moves. And she immediately thought, that's probably a manic decision, Brian. In her defense, deciding to import Pokemon cards from Japan and Korea into the United States and then sell them on my own website for profit did sound pretty crazy. That said, she saw improvement in me over the past two months on the meds and thought, you know what, he might not be completely out there. So I showed her the numbers. We both agreed that it was a good idea to at least look into. Uh, we spent $1,300 on a bunch of Charizard cards that we could sell for nearly double the price. And I have a whole video on this, um, on how I started my Pokemon card business. I'll link into the description. Long story short, it worked. And now we have a business that's generating uh, $5 million by the end of this year, which is crazy. And just to clarify something, while I got a crazy good business out of this, the drugs are not magical. Um, you do not just magically get rid of all of the craziness and all of the depression. It's just, again, toned down. So I've learned to manage it and I'll go over those tips at the end here. But basically, if I was unable to like get out of bed, um, my wife, Andrea, she'd just kind of take over the business dozens of times. She'd do all the orders, all the uh, shipping stuff, the emails, the marketing. She basically just ran the company for a few days at a time. Then when I started feeling good again, I got back at it. And if it wasn't for her doing that, we'd probably be out of business by now. So that's my story as a bipolar business owner. And uh, hopefully that was entertaining. Now we're gonna go over some tips if you guys have bipolar disorder or know someone that does. Hopefully these tips help you out. Um, we're just gonna shoot through them here. I got them written down. So number one, before any of these tips, uh, seek the help of a professional. If you Google bipolar bullet points and you match all of them, get some professional help but if you don't want to do that or you've done it or you're going to do it here's some other tips uh, i made all these up so keep that in mind use a calendar or a notebook and keep tracks of your ups and downs that way if you feel particularly depressed or crazy um and you're like "Ooh, i want to shift back to normal you kind of know how long it's going to last so if you're super depressed and you're like hating your life if you kept track of every time you were depressed and they usually lasted five days well you could look at your notebook and be like all right this sucks, but if I go two more days, I'll probably be over it by then. It kind of helps. Number two, try to embrace and take advantage of the highs. While you should not avoid medication or help like I did for the sake of keeping the highs, if you're going to be high, take advantage of it. Um, this is a good time to catch up on work that you've been avoiding during your lows. If you've been asleep for five days, you got a lot to catch up on. It's also a good time to basically use your limitless brain to come up with ideas, be artistic, you know, creative. Um, as long as you're not spending money or doing anything dangerous, it's fun to explore. If possible, surround yourself with friends or family that know about what you're going through because then they can kind of be like, yo, that's not a good idea, bro. 
And uh, if possible, give them your credit card and then ask permission to use it and make sure that they give it to you. Obviously, if you're not medicated, some of these things are easier said than done. So I acknowledge that, but there you go. Um, any ideas you have that are on the wackier side, wait 48 hours before you act on them. Like if I would have waited 48 hours to go buy a $1,200 guitar, there's a good chance I wouldn't have done it. So again, easier said than done, but I have it written down here. If you feel super high and you think, I'm gonna change the world, just stop. Put the credit card away, cancel your travel plans you made, and sit. If you say something completely unhinged, hopefully someone like my wife, she just points at the couch, turns on anime, and just leaves me alone. It works for me. So in conclusion, that's my story about running a business as someone with bipolar disorder. Hopefully you found some of those stories funny because in hindsight they are, especially the zoo and the cockroach breeding story. And I can go into detail of all these in future videos if you enjoy this content. And if you're one of the 4.4% of Americans that has bipolar disorder, hopefully some of those tips help. This channel's focused on like running a Pokemon card business, but you know, online businesses are all pretty damn similar and this was an interesting topic and I think the algorithm will love it. So thank you guys so much. Um, buy Pokemon cards at pokeyne.com and follow the channel for more interesting business advice. Have a good day.